All right, so to solve by quadratic formula, the main important thing we need to understand, ladies and gentlemen, is say a quadratic equation can be written in the form of ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0. We have to make sure that it equals 0 to find our a, b, and c. Right? Remember when we did that formula? Remember we did that worksheet where it said, hey, let's find a, b, and c, and they didn't equal 0? You have to set it equal to 0 before you can find a, b, and c. All right? So now what we look at this and we say, all right, a is the coefficient of your quadratic term. Is that yes. So therefore, b equals negative 2 and c equals 0, right? Because I do not have a constant term. I don't have anything plus or minus my 2x to give me 0 or to give me or to equal. So it's going to be 0. Because if it was plus, if it was 1, then it would look like that. Right? Yeah, so just remember, it's not that. It's, in, it's on the other side of the equation. OK? Yeah, you could write plus 0. That might make it look easier and understand better. OK, so now the first thing we always want to do when solving by quadratic formula is I always like to do discriminant first. All right? Um, I like to do discriminant first because when I miss a day of class, what it helps me do is helps me understand what I was doing in the last class period. So remember the discriminant went, went like this, b squared minus 4 times a times c. So now that's the discriminant. Mm -hmm. We're going to talk about the quadratic formula here in a second. But we've already practiced days defining the discriminant, so let's do that. So we have b squared, which is negative 2, minus 4 times a times c. Well, obviously, we know that, bless you, bless you, bless you, bless you. So obviously we know that negative 4 times 3 times 0 is just going to equal 0. So I have um, squared. So that's going to equal 4. Now, remember what we talked about, the answer of our discriminant. All right? When we look at the answer of our discriminant, Mallory, what we found out was, remember, if our discriminant was positive and a square number, then we're going to have two real rational roots. All right. If it was positive but not a square number, then it'd be two real irrational roots. And let's see why does that? How do you under? How do you know that? Or how is it going to make sense? So to do that, what we're going to do is solve by the quadratic formula. So we did the discriminant. Then we write down the formula for the quadratic formula. X equals opposite of b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus four times a times c, all over two times a. That is the quadratic formula. Okay. Okay. That is the quadratic form of an equation. This is what we call the quadratic formula. And the quadratic formula pretty much comes from kind of completing the square. But what I want you to understand is when we factor, when we like have a quadratic, we factor it and we find the values of x. But sometimes we have problems that are non-factorable, right? And we, before we wrote prime. But you can actually find the values of x by plugging them into our equation. So let's go ahead and plug in our values into our equation. So x, the, so the values of x, when this function equals 0, x equals opposite of b. So if it's b is negative 2, opposite of that is positive 2, plus or minus. Why now, it's part of the formula. I can go and explain to you where that comes from. But for right now, I don't want to get too confused. And you just need to understand this is the formula. All right? I can explain to you where the plus or minus comes from. For right now, I just want you to understand this is the formula for it to take. Okay? Here's like your given. It's like this. Area equals length times width. All right, why are you multiplying length times width? I can go and explain it to you, why you multiply length times width, right? and I can give you an explanation of it. For right now, I don't want you to be worried about that. We can explain that second. Here, why is this this? I can explain it to you, but it can get probably a little bit confusing right now. All I want you to understand right now is the values of x equal this. Okay. So now what we're going to be looking at is 2 plus or minus. Then you guys look at this. b squared, can you just like stop? Thank you. So now we have b squared minus 4 times a times c. Well, ladies and gentlemen, do we need to redo that again? Or did we already figure out what b squared minus 4 times a times c was? We already figured it out. The answer is 4. So it's the square root of 4 divided by 2 times a. 2 times a, which is? 6. All right. 
Now, why do we know that our discriminant is going to provide us with two real rational roots? The reason being, ladies and gentlemen, do we know what the square root of 4 is? Yeah, it's 2. So it equals 2 plus or minus 2 divided by 6. Now, I don't want you to leave your answer like that because you can evaluate for that. So now what we have is 2 plus 2 divided by 4. Wait, you did the, uh, the discriminant, is that what it's called? Yeah, there? and I plugged that right in there. Right, because that's what the discriminant is. It's your part of your, it's what's under your radical in your um, quadratic formula. Okay. So therefore, I have two You're plus. To make that equal zero. What equals zero? Mm -hmm. I'm trying to. F this is going to give me the values when I plug them into this equation that makes it equal zero. But all you're doing now is just evaluating. What's two plus two? Four. What's four divided by six? Reduces down to two thirds. What's 2 minus 2? 0. What's 0 divided by 6? 0. So therefore, what you have is two solutions. You have a solution of 2 thirds, and you have a solution of 0. OK? And that's what you guys need to do for your two, three problems that you have.